In His Image by Karen Travis was a short story that was written for Vader, the Ultimate Guide, a souvenir magazine that debuted at 2005's Comic-Con International and was later sold online. A two-edged sword, which was originally misprinted without the word A, is a sequel short story to In His Image, written by Karen Travis with illustrations by Chris Travas, which originally appeared in Star Wars Insider issue number 85. If you managed to miss either Vader the Ultimate Guide or that single issue of the Star Wars Insider magazine, never fear, both stories were reprinted in the paperback edition of Legacy of the Force Betrayal. So first, a brief summary slash timeline disclaimer. In His Image is set pretty soon after Revenge of the Sith, 19 years before the Battle of Yavin, and details the creation of Force-sensitive Stormtrooper clones, as well as Vader evading an assassination attempt orchestrated by Palpatine. A two-edged sword picks up a year later, 18 years before the Battle of Yavin, and follows Vader and Palpatine training the clones for the Stormtrooper Corps, as well as further exploring Vader's thoughts of betrayal and paranoia. So first, the good. I think it's always very interesting to see early Vader, who has a lot more Anakin Skywalker in him than he would like to admit to. And the Vader of these two Travis stories is ruthless at times, but also values loyalty, especially the loyalty of his aide-de-camp, Lakoff. Vader doesn't trust Palpatine, and rightfully so, because Palpatine sends an Emperor's hand after him in the first story in a assassination attempt, which Palpatine knows Vader will foil, but he wants to teach Vader things. The Vader of In His Image is very emotionally dead. He doesn't really seem to feel a lot of anger or passion or honestly anything. And so that assassination attempt serves as a wake-up call that if he wants to proceed and proceed in alliance with Palpatine, he's going to have to channel that part of himself. In his image also focuses on that post-Clone Wars, post-Revenge of the Sith era where they're phasing out the Fett clones from Kamino, but still thinking that clones are the way to go. It's not quite the Stormtrooper core that we see in the original trilogy, but still like, hey, if this guy seems like he has great skills, maybe we should clone him and just make a bunch of him. I'm like, maybe not the best idea, but I could see how coming off of the Clone Wars, that would still be something they're trying to pursue. Both stories in his image and a two-edged sword show Palpatine continuously testing Vader. Vader has these nebulous ideas of overthrowing Palpatine at some point, but he's not ready to committing to them. And instead, Palpatine is continuously prodding him, poking at him, trying to get reactions from him to shape him into the Sith he wants him to be. Both stories are also pretty action-filled in that we have an assassination attempt in the first one, and then we have a revolt of the Force-sensitive clones led by another Emperor's hand in the second story, so very exciting to read. But on the more meh front, I'm honestly not sure how well in his image and a two-edged sword really fit into this immediately post-Revenge of the Sith era, specifically because I think think from looking at Wikipedia that In His Image is set before the climax of James Luceno's Dark Lord, The Rise of Darth Vader. And in that book, Vader is still coming to terms with not just his feelings, but also his prosthetics themselves. And in his image, Vader seems much more comfortable with his physical state than I would have expected at that point. 
I also think I would have expected more roiling anger coming off of Vader instead of this emotional blankness that he has in the first story. There are multiple references in both stories to betrayal by Padme especially and betrayal by Kenobi, but he doesn't dwell on it as much as I would have thought that immediately post Revenge of the Sith Vader would have. Similarly, both stories show us Emperor's hands. We have Sa Quiz in the first one who tries to kill Vader, Vader foils it, and then ultimately takes samples from him to try to make Force-sensitive Stormtrooper clones. And then in, in the second story, we have another Emperor's hand, Shaven, who is training the Quiz clones. And this just feels like a lot of Emperor's hands to me, especially for in the timeline. I know that a key component of most of them was that they didn't know about the existence of the others, that Mara J didn't know there were any other hands and felt very betrayed by that reality. And in fact, Shaven's Revolt is prompted by the realization that he is not the only one, but I still felt like this was maybe too many hands running around a little too early in the timeline. Because I think the interesting part about Emperor's hands is that they think they're unique, they think that the role they serve is something that no one else does. And in the case of Mara Jade, she was not a fallen Jedi. Palpatine took her as a child and basically trained her from infancy. So I think that gives someone a very different mindset than a dark Jedi siding with Palpatine would have. And like, I think a dark Jedi as an Emperor's hand maybe wouldn't mind that duplicity and like there are more of you than just one but it, it's a key point of especially the second story here and finally palpatine is a very passive villain here he's basically sitting on his butt puppet mastering everything around him which yeah is a very palpatine trait but i feel like it then leads Vader to be like, I want to overthrow him, I want to overthrow him. Which I do agree is something that Vader would be thinking of, but I'm not sure, again, this early on in the timeline that it would be something he'd be constantly thinking of. I think that for Palpatine, there's a certain sense of satisfaction and thrill he gets from having bent Vader to his will, and Vader is not the man that Anakin once was, and he's serving Palpatine, but he knows that there is this, like, resentment lingering the whole time. I guess I'm just not sure if Vader would be quite so overt about it as he is in these two stories. I always saw Vader telling Luke that together we can overthrow the Emperor is like Vader having reached a boiling point, Vader having learned that he does have a surviving son is what tips him over to like much more overt rebellion against his master. And I'm just not sure like again 19 years before A New Hope if Vader would be at this level of wanting to seize power for himself already. I also feel like what happens to Lakoff at the end of A Two-Edged Sword is sort of mean. He's very badly burned and sent back to Coruscant after not seeing his wife and family for a year, and Vader's like, well, I will help him as my master did not help me, but it just felt a little mean. It was also interesting meeting Lakoff after I already read the Legacy of the Force books, which featured his grandson, who served under Jason in the Galactic Alliance Guard. Because you can see why his grandson would say that his grandfather had good memories of Vader, even though at the time reading the books, I was like, really? Vader? Yeah, Vader definitely comes off nicer and more rewarding of loyalty than I would have expected. So in short, 
These two short stories in his image and a two-edged sword are an interesting look into Vader almost immediately after Revenge of the Sith. We see a lot of the things from the prequels carried over in that they're still trying to clone people to make up their stormtrooper core. And we see Vader coming to terms with his new self and his new position within the Galactic Empire. I'm not sure it 100% syncs up with where we are in the timeline though and existing stories of like Vader's feelings and Vader's sense of ease with himself. But I still found it interesting to read, and if you missed out on these stories the first go around and don't have a paperback copy of Betrayal on hand, I'll put a link to PDFs of both stories down in the description box so you can read them for yourself. So next time I'm going to be reading a standalone novel set in between A New Hope and The Empire Strikes Back, Allegiance by Timothy Zahn.